Live on Instagram, everybody. We are live. So this is what's going to happen today. We're doing a live session all about my practice. This is what I do when I practice. Um, I'm going to, and, and actually this hasn't changed in a really long time, whether it might in the near future, who knows. But this is what I've done and this is what I've taught for years and years now. And, and it just, it works. It does work. If you, if you keep it up, that's when it works. <laughs> if you don't keep it up, it does not work, everybody. Amazingly enough. So we start with a saxophone. This is what we do. So when you get your saxophone out of its case, you're going to need to warm it up, everybody, because it's a big metal thing with a bit, bit of bamboo on it. And you, so you wet your reed, you pop it in your mouth for a little while, you wet it, you get it all nice and flexible because a dry reed is not a good thing. We need a nice moist, because I do quite enjoy the word moist. We need a nice, moist, flexible reed, everybody. That is what we need. So that goes on there, that goes on there. Right, this is assuming that you've not really done any playing that day. We've got a nice reed, we've got a cold lump of metal, and we need to get it warmed up. All right, so first things first. I'm assuming that you can breathe, because <laughs> most people can. Remember when we're breathing on for a saxophone, we don't want to go, because <gasps> that's just not going to get enough air in. Okay, it does require a good amount of air, so you need to have some ready from down here um, to be able to put it through the instrument. And then you need to warm up the instrument and also your body and your mouth. So this is me taking you through it so quickly. Um, we would we would do it for longer. So if you're a if you're a beginner player. Um, you would you would start with long notes because you do need to build up your lips and your chops call them your chops so let's pick a nice easy note in the middle of the saxophone <laughs> going for as long as you can you keep that breath coming up you've got support here from your diaphragm and you just keep it going and then you can do things like starting quietly and getting louder but all the time you want to maintain that lovely note which is really in tune it's so important if your tuning goes and if you're going like this that means that your lip isn't doing what it's supposed to be doing. So you want to just keep that going. Keep a nice strong lip and a nice strong diaphragm. Really important. Okay, so you know, you might want to do sort of three or four of those for as long as you possibly can. Now when you get a bit more um, into your playing, you might want to do things called... <laughs> Sorry Insta that we lost you for a sec. If it's really crap, Either go to YouTube, which is youtube.com forward slash Becky Biggins, or go to Facebook, which is facebook.com slash Becky Biggins, and you'll find us. I think they're working. Weird. I think it's the wind. So, as I was saying, overtones. So, this is notes based on the harmonic, uh, what's it called? Uh, what would you call them? They're based on harmonics. So, it's like you're thinking about the physics of a, of a sound wave, basically. So, within this low B flat, You've also got, without changing my fingers, another B flat. And then the fifth above. And then the octave above that. This is where I start to fall down. <laughs> so you can practice, instead of practicing long notes, you practice overtones. So you practice long notes, um, but keeping your fingers in, in, this, in one position, okay? And you can do kind of up and down. first because you're kind of you're, you're sort of giving the right wavelength to your instrument if that makes sense okay so that's what I do and if you're really keen on that this is an awesome book um, because it shows you about yeah it, it basically it's it starts with long notes sustained tones and then it goes on to dynamics 
and then you're going between and then you've got intervals and then a lot later you're doing overtone exercises and this is just a fabulous book for that so i really recommend that one okay cool so that's the first thing we do the next thing we do is scales now if you're practicing for an exam obviously you will know all about scales my friend won't you <laughs> loads of people hate them but they're really important um but i feel with scales it's really important to get them in context like why are you learning scales what's it going to help you do well if you're playing a piece for your exam and it's in the key of b you need to be able to play in the key of B and you need your brain and your fingers to work in that key. So if you're going to be going on to play something in the key of B, it helps if you practice the scale of B because then you've got that sound and you've got those finger that that those um f fingerings under your fingers. So what I do when I play at the moment um and I've not always done this but it depends on what I'm working on is I'm doing this I'm doing this exercise around what's called the diminished axis. Okay, so it's basically I'm I'm playing four bars over a certain chord, then I go up a minor third, yeah, then I go up a minor third, then I go up a minor third, and then I'm back to where I started. I know it sounds complicated, but don't worry, it's just an example. So for my first four bars, I'm going to play the chord of D7, or I'm playing over the chord of D7, and to get a D7 with the simplest and most normal sounding scale we can, we play this scale. <laughs> basically the D major scale but it's just got a flattened seventh. Hear the difference? Is the normal do a do ba do 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 well this one is ba do 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 it's got the flattened seventh and that makes it work over a D7 chord. And then when I've got that I improvise using my little internal metronome which doesn't always work so using an external metronome is really important too um and then i improvise for four bars and then i move to an f7 uh, going up a minor third and then i go to an a flat seven so it sounds a bit like this if i get it right here we go one two three <laughs> straightforwardly started on d7 went up a minor third to f7 went up a minor third to a flat seven went up a minor third to b7 it's just a kind of straightforward exercise that has taken me a long time to get anywhere near right um, and that is my kind of scale exercise and my kind of early improvising exercise so so far we've done long notes or overtones and then we've done scales and and later on you put your scales in context Hi, I'm just going to say a few hellos. Hi, if you've joined us. Uh, Ryan, you're lovely. Thank you. Oh, hi, Arch. Here's Arch. Are you going to say hi? Hi. You say hi, everyone, on Instagram. Hi, everyone, on Instagram. Hi, everyone, on Facebook. Hi, everyone, on Facebook. Hi, everyone, on YouTube. Hi, everyone, on YouTube. What's your name? Archie. And how old are you? Five! And have you got your own saxophone? Yes. Okay, right, I'll shout you in a few minutes and you can get your saxophone ready, okay? And then you can come and show people. All right, deal? Or maybe... No, I think we'll do that. Okay, I'll see you soon. I'll give you a shout, okay? Okay. Arch has got a J sax, which is awesome. It's made of plastic, it can't break. Yeah, so far. Um, okay, so that's the second thing. We need to move on a bit speedily. I talk too much. So the next thing is a bit of sight reading. I love sight reading. I kind of think, why do I do it? Because I never do it in my, you know, I'm not, I'm not a musician that just goes into a session and has to read. But I really like it and, I, and it, to me it's always been important because I've been in big bands and things and when I'm learning new songs, if I'm doing a big band gig, I just get sheets and I need to be able to read them. And so that's why I practice my sight reading. Well, I quite enjoy it. Okay, listen, this is not what this is about. 
Can you go, please, Mr. Ninja? Off you go. <laughs> Thank you. He's got a curtain tie back <laughs> for a ninja mask. Right, okay, stop. Listen, 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 listen. Oh, hi. Okay, oh. right, you've said hi. I want you to go now. Go, go, go. Downstairs. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> try and keep a five year old out of the way. So here we go. This is, um, these are really lovely exercises that I've done for years and years and years. I saw my old sax teacher Roy the other day, my first teacher, and he still uses these, and I still use these. They're by Lenny Niehaus. It's called, this one's called Advanced Jazz Conception for Saxophone and its Studies, and they're really nicely written for sax players. Okay, enough. Out. And this is a waltz, so it goes like this. So you set a nice general tempo. You know, I'm not training for a marathon here. I'm just going to do some straightforward reading. So this is it. <laughs> recognizable structure and so when I've done you know the first section we have a little um a little kind of episode I think that's right and then we go back to the first statement and that's really nice it's lovely when you're playing something and you get back to a bit that you know um I can play that fairly easily so maybe that's not a great thing to practice or to test myself with because apart from one little sticky I might just practice that bit. I mean, it is nice to practice something that you can play every now and again, but at the same time, you're not really going to push yourself and learn loads. So maybe not. Okay, so then I do a bit of sight reading. So that's the sight reading. And then I go on to a bit of a transcription at the moment. Um, this is one of my favourite tunes. Uh, and the solo is by one of my favorite players. Did I turn the other speaker on? Nope. One sec. And I talk about this all the time, so you're gonna, you're gonna recognize it, but this is it. Anyone know what this is? This is a solo by Michael Brecker on Maxine by Donald Fagan. Not a long one. Okay. So, so because I know this song so well, I can mostly work it out if I'm in the right key. And I have played it before. <laughs> but there are some bits that I really struggle with now if you are doing this for like hours a day you will work out every scale that they use and even the tricky bits and you'll get rid of the really hard fingering but I don't do this for hours a day because I've got because I'm a singer I've got two small kids and like life is blooming crazy right now I just I'm not one of those people that has watched everything on Netflix and so they're going back to practice um you know it's like time is time is of the essence so what I do with these if there's a certain if there's a certain scale that I can't hear then I cheat and I look it up so I have cheated in this one so there was a scale just near the end <laughs> If I can slow that down and have a listen to it, I'll realise that it's an 
E mixolydian, which is what I was playing earlier on D. But my ears don't work that well, and so I so I cheated. And I think that's okay. And the reason I think it's okay, obviously I think it's okay, is because I'm because without cheating and without getting a copy of music which I just got off the internet, um, I wouldn't know that that was an E7 and I wouldn't have learned anything. So I think that is, I think it's, if you get stuck with something and if you really don't know, you, your ears can't work it out, then, then do get a transcription and think, but don't just go, oh yeah, cool, I don't need to work it out now. You look at it and go, oh, that's what they're playing. Okay, cool. Well, I know that those notes are the major scale of A, which means that if I'm ending on an E and it's over an E chord, then I'm probably playing an E7 and I'm, I'm playing an E mixolydian. So that's, so that's a reason for kind of cheating, if you like. But try and do everything else with your ears. And then this scale I struggled with a little bit because that was chromatic. And then we go something like... But it sounds a bit more whole tone than that to me. But it's not. Another tricky one, but it's all over like uh, roots and fifths. And then G I think needed help and then uh, okay so that's where I needed a little bit of help with that but you see what I mean like you need to work it out with your ears and it's good for your ears and it's good for your playing and let's see if let's see if I can actually get through this with a little bit of help from my cheat sheet but hopefully not too much starts on an A. Come on, bigots. No, it starts on an E. not too terrible I just I know the bits that I need to practice that's why it's also helpful having the sheet music because you can just circle them and work on those bits individually but again I'd spend some time on that trying to get the bits that I haven't got under my fingers I might play along with a metronome um, you know the, the ways of ways of getting things right basically um, and then I guess say say I know that I've got to do a solo on a particular tune when I'm gigging, that's what I would look at next. So I do my kind of straightforward things and like, you know, t box ticking, is it right or is it wrong? And then I think I'd sit down and look at the tune that I was working on, um, whatever that might be. At the moment, I'm not, I'm not gigging obviously, um, but if there was a new tune or if I'd just written a tune, then I might start working on that and kind of getting that under my fingers in case I have to play that live. And obviously, if there's anything coming up where I am playing saxophone, I would be working on that specifically. Um, or if you've got an exam coming up, you'd work on your exam pieces. You wouldn't just kind of do a bit of nice sight reading and then a transcription of something you fancy. You'd be working hard on the stuff that you need to do. Um, 
and that's and that's kind of it that's what I do when I practice uh I hope that somebody has found that helpful on Instagram or YouTube or Facebook sorry about Facebook it's being really silly again right now um so I hope that somebody's found that useful I hope you've enjoyed Saxophone Sunday today and I will see you on Tuesday for more uh, for another delve into my record collection for Turntable Tuesday so I'll see you then thanks so much for joining me Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.